Good afternoon to Yang Berbahagia, Datuk Li Yao Cho, uh, the chairman of MBO, oh, MPOB, uh, Mr. Chong Kim Sing, CEO of Bursa Malaysia Derivative Berhad, my panel, uh, my fellow panelists, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. It is indeed my pleasure to be here to share with you some of the financial instruments that Bank of China Group offers particularly in bridging the bilateral trade between China and Malaysia. My presentation will be divided into three subtopics. That is an overview, a very brief introduction of Bank of China Group. And then second, we will talk about a little bit about economic development, uh, palm, oil, palm oil development in China. And thirdly and last, we will do. Uh, we will have a very short session on BOC instrument to enhance export for China uh, for CPO to China market. Okay, okay this is the first part. Uh, established. Established since 1912, BOC is the only Chinese bank in continuous operation for over 100 years. Acted as central bank from 1912 to 1928, it was also the only licensed bank to handle foreign exchange businesses and the first one having overseas branches since 1930s. So our first branch in Malaysia started in our uh, Penang, uh, since 1939 and subsequently uh, it was successfully listed in both domestic and overseas market in Shanghai and Hong Kong in 2006 and we celebrated 100 years anniversary in 2012 and has been leading Chinese um, bank in promoting renminbi with more than um, with the launching of RMB Index Initiative uh, in 2013. And currently, the group is also uh, heading the RMB Clearing Bank for, most, uh, for nine countries, including Hong Kong, Macau, Taipei, uh, Luxembourg, Frankfurt, Paris, Sydney, and Malaysia. The latest one is South Africa. And BOC has a diversified and integrated financial service platform and delivers commercial banking, investment banking, insurance, asset management, and even we have an aircraft leasing business and other financial services. We have a global service network of more than 10,000 branches in mainland China, Hong Kong, Macau, Taiwan, as well as presence in more than 20, 42 countries worldwide. The op chart here actually shows that under commercial banking segment, we have four commodity finance units in Shanghai, Singapore, UK and USA, while under investment banking, we have BOCI Global Commodity Outfit in Hong Kong, Singapore, Shanghai and US. Um, this slide shows that you know, promoting renminbi has been the mission and mandate of Bank of China Malaysia. Just like just now Inja Adnan mentioned, in 2011, we were designated by Bank Negara Malaysia as onshore settlement institution for renminbi, while in January 2015, we have been officially appointed as the offshore renminbi clearing center by PBOC in January 2015. What does this mean to local companies? With the establishment of the necessary infrastructure, Malaysia companies will now be able to use Ramanpi product and services to directly settle trade with China to save on transaction costs and increase settlement efficiency. Part two, I may not go into too in-depth. So ladies and gentlemen, if I may just highlight some latest update on palm oil de development in um, China. According to BMI report released in 1st September 2015, in China, palm oil imports have re-accelerated since April 
and will remain more elevated in the second half of 2015 compared with the level seen in the uh, second half of 2014. This is what we have seen in Mr. Uh, Tia's slide just now. Palm oil prices are attractive compared to soy oil, which will incentivize local consumption. Uh, moreover, palm oil stocks at port remains below the level seen in 2013 and 14, suggesting more room for growth. But however, palm oil consumption and import have been declining since 2014, after recording staggering growth over the past 10 years. Import decreased by 11% to 5.3 million tons in 2014, according to official trade data. And they have declined further by 4% year-on-year in the January to July 2015 period. We forecast, uh, according to PMI uh, report, they forecast uh, palm oil consumption to decrease by another 2% in 2015, as demand will be stronger in second half 15 due to price competitiveness. In the longer term, consumption and import growth is, is unlikely to match growth seen in the 2000s when imports were expanding at double-digit rate on average annually. The ongoing growth of woos in country in China will limit the expansion of food and vegetable oil consumption. Moreover, with the increasing in soybean crushing capacity in China, import of soybean instead of vegetable oils will be more favoured. And the condition of the palm oil development more or less remain unchanged as domestic supply consists only a fraction of its production, while aggressive plantation areas planned but still pending implementation. Domestic demand at this juncture um, still entirely rely on import, particularly for food and cooking oil consumption. Thus, there may be potential for growth with the biological growth in population and policies that emphasise on food security as one of the top national agendas. The analysts are of the view that palm oil's outlook is bearish as it has not escaped the rock in commodities market hitting a six-year low end of August 2015, with a concern over lack, uh, lackluster demand in China, surging inventories to close to 2.5 million tons, higher since 2013, and the recent devaluation of yuan, which offset some of the benefit of key importers arise from our weakening ringgit. It is probably a good time to be innovative um, for instance, maybe butter trading. We have rice exchange for high-speed train for Thailand. And, or probably palm oil, you know, exchange for infrastructure contracts or renewable energy to solve both the excess capacity situation. Well, that may be debated uh, from the topic of providing financial instrument, but rather the role of Bank of China as linkage or platform may come in handy on this butter trading. Well, the third part, I, I would like to highlight on some of the instruments for crude palm, uh, this uh, CPO market. BOC Group launched its global commodities business at the end of 2010, becoming the first Chinese institution to obtain clearing membership of the Chicago Mer Merchandise Exchange, London Metal Exchange, and Intercontinental Exchange. BOC Group Global Commodities provide clients with comprehensive hedging solution and a full spectrum of client-centric commodities product, including OTC trading over-the-counter, futures brokerage, commodity strategy, and physical trading. In order to provide clients with 24-hour service, BOC Group uh, Global Commodities has established a global sales and distribution network by setting up offices at Hong Kong, London, New York, Singapore, and Shanghai. And the extensive ch exchange membership a network in USA and Europe can be seen in these slides. And in Asia, the linkage with uh, Hong Kong Exchange and Clearing Limited, Shanghai Futures Exchange, Dalian or even uh, Zhengzhou Commod Commodity Exchange, 
uh, was via BOCI, uh, our uh, affiliates. These are some of the solutions and services including future and options, OTC trading, physical trading, and, those, and so on. So uh, in this slide, we see agriculture, they will actually include soybean, palm oil, sugar, corn, and soybean oil. For commodity trading, for commodity financing, Bank of China provides integrated services for the entire business chain from exploration, production, logistic, value add, up to marketing of products through our commercial banking platform as well as our investment banking platform. The commercial banking provides full-fledged commercial finance, financial products from traditional and structured product, uh, trade financing, pre- and post-export financing, project financing while investment banking can act as a market maker, derivatives agents and other value-added services including investment management services as well as consulting services. Uh, the product can be further break down into three categories such as conventional products which are commonly found in most of the financial institutions. We have structured products catered for larger commodities exporters such as inventory financing, front-to-back LC as well as other more advanced structured products which can be tailored according to specific requirements including reserve financing, margin hedging, commodity repurchase and so on. The opportunities derived from RMB liberalisation, where direct trade between the two countries would be made easy. The benefit of using RMB to trade, including the capability to access the wider import, importer base, because I think uh, at this point of time, maybe we are dealing with those, you know, the first tier importers, but when RMB can be commonly used, we can actually also target to second tier or even the SME sectors. Same time zone settlement, uh, this is uh, the benefit of using RMB compared to U US dollar which may likely incur additional one day difference in settlement. Exporters is also able to negotiate pricing as there will not be a forex exposure on the importer's part. Uh, they can straight away use RMB as the uh, code and thus double conversion can be avoided. On policy-wise, RMB trade is giving a, given, giving a longer tenure up to 180 days or more as compared to foreign currency trade in China, which generally only up to 90 days. But the excess fund kept in RMB will generate a higher interest income, which generally may be up to a 2% difference as compared to US dollar. Uh, this is in conjunction with our earlier promotion on, you know, um, RMB deposit, which we actually gave up to 4% returns for a one-year RMB deposit place. And one of the case studies that I can think of here is um, the palm oil transaction on forfeiting uh, arrangement. The benefit of this is the transaction is on without recourse basis. This involves only simple documentation while no credit facility or limit is required from the exporters we are banking on the financial institution's limit. Exporters can capitalize on BOC, wide banking network of over 1,600 corresponding banks across the world. So in this manner, even you deal with a, um, a second tier company, where they are not using the major four banks in China, probably they are using some, some provincial banks, you can still trade the, you know, the LC using our correspondence bank, uh, the, bank, the bank's limit platform. On risk management front, forfeiting is able to eliminate country and commercial risk and remove account receivables by recognizing revenues immediately. Okay, um, forfeiting you actually gave you options 
that exporters could ultimately choose your financing currency because we always hear um, some of the exporters say, you know, US dollar is cheaper and renminbi could be more expensive. But this is an option, you know, for um, even if you receive LC in renminbi, you may opt to, to finance it in US dollar or in ringgit, uh, which is uh, available. Um, LC received in renminbi, the exporters can choose to finance under US dollar or Malaysia ringgit or vice versa. And the second part, uh, probably this is not the financing ins financial instrument, but this is more of a non-financial instrument that using um, financial products are in principle homogeneous and could be differentiated by a certain degree of innovation. Uh, I quoted Jack Ma in his speech at Hanover, Germany early this year. He said, the future world business will not be focusing by size, standardization, nor power, but by flexibility, nimbleness, customization, and most important, capitalizing on data. So that is the purpose of Bank of China Group holding numerous sessions of business matching, capitalizing on the vast availability of our database to match make uh, the companies, um, you know, the exporter and importers. This is our, uh, we have actually one successful event on uh, June 29, where we actually uh, together jointly with um, the Chinese Chamber of Commerce, we have organized a matching session. It's called One Belt, One Road, Malaysia China Economic Conference, where we have actually successfully matched 200 enterprises participated. There were over 300 one-to-one -one matching sessions, while 100 video conference, com uh, conferencing was, were going on at the same time. The success rate is about 67%, and uh, the, uh, this actually indicated that 67% of the participating industries, they have actually indicated uh, further collaboration um, with their counterparties. The success rate, uh, just now I say, success rate is about 67%, and we are witnessing some signing of MOU between the Chinese and Malaysia companies to deepen their collaboration. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the management of Bank of China, I would like to reiterate the role of Bank of China as bridge and platform for businesses in both countries. We are committed to carry out more of the matching session according to respective industries, for instance, CPO exporters, uh, even for halal industries or other resource-based industries to expand their business frontier in China, capitalizing on the uh, very large database that we have through Bank of China's network. And with that, I would like to thank you for giving me the opportunity to participate in this conference. Looking forward to be of service to you. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Felicia Ding. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Ms. Felicia Ding is unable to join us during the interactive discussion later. So if you have any questions to her, you may ask now. Perhaps we can take one to two questions from the audience. I would like to apologize because I'm catching a flight 6 o'clock to Beijing. There is another matching session going on in Beijing uh, together with our Miti and Maida. So I, I just hope we can actually work together, you know. Uh, there, there, there will be a lot of opportunities because a lot of, uh, probably I ex attended some of the uh, sessions before and there are still people saying that maybe Chinese part party may not want to accept renminbi and you know but uh, what, what I want to say again is let us know the buyers we will actually try to talk to them and using our onshores our, our sister's branch and we will find out what is the reason and there is no reason for uh, industries not to use their own currencies so uh, with that I, I hope Ding? yes there's one question from that gentleman There's a microphone in front here. Kindly state your name and the organization that you're representing.
Hello. Good afternoon. Thank you for your presentation. In fact, my question is not about China. We have a case where one of the customers is in Iran. So you know there is embargo and sanction on the USD from Iran. So they offer us to pay in RMB, in the Chinese currency. Uh, is it okay this case to open the LC from Iran, but in the Chinese currency here to Malaysia? Thank you. Um, I think basically we still comply with the sanctions list uh, regulation. So uh, basically in Malaysia, um, we, we actually refrain from doing, you know. Even though if the currency is not USD, I mean the currency is going to be there and be still under sanctions. So right. we cannot benefit from this one um, for the third party country. Yes. Okay, thank you. Okay, any other question? Thank you very much. All right, thank you, Ms. Felicia Dean.